Welcome to the For Me development update of week 3, the first development update for 2020. The first update for this week is related to skim integrations. So integrations between For Me and identity providers like Microsoft Azure. Um, unfortunately, we do not have a working integration in place. So I will have to revert to the screenshot that is included in the newsletter for this week. Uh, and the update is that it is now possible to delete skim records. So when you synchronize your users between for me uh, and the skim source, um, sometimes this synchronization becomes corrupt. For example, because you uh, change the configuration of the integration. Um, and to get the integration up and running again correctly, uh, you might have to delete the synchronized records. Uh, so the update for this week is that it is now possible, um, uh, there's now a delete button, uh, to delete the synchronized records so that they will be re-synchronized and that uh, with that the synchronization errors will be resolved. The next update is related to contact details of a person. Uh, when you go to the chat field, there's now a possibility to insert Microsoft Teams as a URL for chat functionality. Um, and when you do that, you can immediately start a chat with a certain person by clicking on the link. Um, and in this case for Alan Brown, because that is the person that I am editing. Uh, by inserting the Microsoft Teams URL, you immediately start a Microsoft Teams chat with her. And you can use the Microsoft chat, uh, Teams chat functionality also in custom links. So for example, if you want to have an action menu that immediately starts a Microsoft Teams chat with the requester of a certain request, you can create a custom link and then insert the person chat underscore teams link uh, so that for me will pick up the currently selected requester and immediately uh, launch a Microsoft Teams chat with the requester. The next update is related to automation rules. Uh, it is now possible to include logic for team coordinators uh, in automation rules. So the example that I built here is that I want to create a notification for the team coordinator of a certain team uh, when a member change of a request is taking place. Uh, that might, for example, be useful to provide some feedback about the correct first assignment of a request to the correct person. Um, so what this does is it is checking for a few uh, parameters. So is there a team coordinator for the current team in the first place? What is the previous member and what is the current member uh, of the request? Um, and then I check for the conditions. Is there a team coordinator and is there a previous member? And if so, I want to add a note to the current request that uh, does a mention for the team coordinator and indicates that there has been a, a, a member change. So this is just one of the examples uh, in where you can use that new parameter team coordination in the automation rule. So let's see what it actually does. So when I go to my inbox, I can pick up a request and then forward it to a different member and you see that the automation rule now automatically adds a note to for myself in this case because I set myself as the team member of my team and you see that the member change uh, mention is working correctly. The next update is a useful enhancement to the export functionality. So when you export records from the records console, for example, all requests, and I want to export them in Microsoft Excel. Uh, previously, you have to you had to wait for the uh, notification email to arrive in your inbox, and that email contained a link to the actual export files. And the update for this week is that this notification dialog 
already has a link to uh, the export details and from the export details you can immediately download the files so there's no longer a need to wait for the email to arrive you can just directly access the uh, download URL uh, from within for me. And the last update for this week is related to knowledge articles. Uh, as you probably know it's possible in self service to provide feedback on a knowledge article and uh, when you click the thumbs down icon uh, you get this uh, dialog in where you could provide feedback to indicate how the article could be uh, improved. Uh, and what is new this week is that there's now also a possibility to include uh, images, uh, for example screenshots in your feedback, which might be a bit easier to explain uh, uh, what you're missing or what could be a nice addition uh, uh, to the knowledge article. And that concludes the overview for the first development update of the new year. Thanks for watching and see you next week.